listening to anime and games differently because of what we're doing today. And uh, when I do uh, my voice panel, same thing, what I call uh, voice maker. I'll talk more about how I create voices there with the layering and stuff like that. But listen carefully and tell me with Xemnas what you're hearing. How am I doing this? I'm slower. Slower pace. Mm -hmm. More breathy. It's a breathier voice, that's right. Xemnas is almost whispering. Mm. It's amazing when you're the boss. <laughs> you don't have to raise your voice. You're the boss. They just know. I don't whisper. But it's pretty close to that, isn't it? Slower pace, whispering, what else? You said deeper. Now listen carefully when I'm speaking to you like this and I take the voice away and speak to you like this and go back to speaking. Am I lowering my voice? No, it's the same pitch. I'm changing the voice, I'm changing the placement, changing the pace, but I'm not actually speaking in a deeper voice. Now, Kurama, okay, the one uh, before some of you arrived, I talked about the first time I ever did that voice, um, I played a mountain. They said, you're, you're a mountain today. I went, really? <laughs> How the hell do you voice a mountain? <laughs> And there were two riders crossing this huge, there was a mountain pass or something like that. And the, the wizard, the sorcerer, the whatever, didn't want them to make it to town or to continue the storyline. In other words, he had to stop them. So he commanded the mountain to stop them. And so they're riding over here and everything starts shaking. And I can't remember, I, I don't know if it was a cave or an opening in the earth, but uh, they came riding over and I said, two riders, too bad. <laughs> and uh, the, we did something, but they managed to get through, and I forget, there's like one episode on one show that I did. But the director said, my God, that sounded like your voice was coming out of your heels. Okay. <laughs> that became my go-to voice for that kind of character. I use it in um, uh, the Digimon movie when I was uh, uh, Dioboroman and also Kokoman. I did that voice for both of them. It's my standard go-to voice. So when I went in... Uh, they called me, I didn't even audition, they just said, we, we have this voice in Naruto we want you to do. We want you to do that voice. So that's where Kurama came from. Now, listen carefully. When I speak with Naruto and I say, give me your chakra and I will give you power. Now, what am I doing? Scratchy. Good. Throaty, kind of a scratchy quality. What else? Mm -hmm. Still whispering, are they? It does have a whispery quality, doesn't it? Now that's different. Now, I don't do that with Xemnas, but when I'm a Kurama and I go into battle, I raise my voice quite a bit in terms of volume, okay? But am I using a deeper voice? It sounds deeper, but I'm simply placing it differently. What else am I doing with my vocal cords? This is harder to pick out. It's part of the advanced. Oh, you always vibrate your vocal cords. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't speak. <laughs> it's like when somebody says, oh, you're supporting. Yeah, you breathe every time. <laughs> and my advice as an actor to all of you, don't stop breathing. Okay. It's bad for you. you know. Really bad. Um, yeah, I'm actually uh, vibrating the vocal cords, but you always do that if you speak. You can't have voice without it. What am I doing with the vocal cords? Vocal folds, of course. I'm actually not doing anything really with my throat, but you're on the right track, okay? And if you were creating voices and that's what that it occurred to you to do the voice I just did or a version of that, and you thought compression, you'd write that down and use it. Because your terms are the right terms for you. Because I teach this stuff technically. I'm a, I'm a speech teacher on top of all the other crap I do. So um, in fact, what I'm doing is scraping my vocal folds together, okay? When you hear my voice like this, which this is my real voice, I almost never ever get to use it as an actor. I'm always called upon to do characters and, and accents and dialects, change my voice, change everything like that, change my <coughs> age. I almost never get to walk in and just sound like Paul St. Peter. There's a Netflix series coming out called The Family Business. It's a French series that we dubbed into English. And I actually get to use my voice, sort of, for an older character. 
So this is old Frenchman. Uh, the problem is he becomes a major dope smoker. So, <laughs> so uh, most of the time, uh, dude, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, le dude. Because <laughs> it's a French series. So. No, I don't actually do le dude. It's just my voice. But I, I kind of use my voice. But because I'm an older character, they want me to be uh, a lot subtler in all of my things. And the actor that plays the role on screen is just terrific, really great actor. But because I'm smoking so much and they want me to be older, <clears throat> somebody listened to me, the girl who plays my daughter in the series, came in to listen to me. And as soon as I walked in the room, the first thing she said was, in a world where men <laughs> And that's what it sounds like because I'm an older dope smoking guy. Okay, so I didn't get to use my own voice again. But they, they cast me to bring him, to bring me to that, and then when I saw what was going on with, you know, <laughs> every episode, he's the one that's the most against uh, legalizing marijuana, and he's doing it illegally out of his butcher shop, and then he becomes the biggest stoner of the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But yeah, she said, in a world, so I said, in a world where cannabis is legal and pork becomes kosher, one butcher will change everything, you know? Because the guy's a butcher and his business fails, so they, they start selling dope instead, you know? That's enough of the plot line, but it's called the family business, so when it comes out, that's me, you know? Awesome. Um,